and welcome to another episode of Wednesdays with W. This is episode number 23 and I'm going to have a guest of a different kind. I mean different kind because uh, what he has done so far is not uh, ever considered glamorous because everybody clamors for something else that they think is sexy. But this man chose to take up the role of a fielding coach very early in his coaching career and he's gone on to be an integral part of Team India for a long period of time. He's had extraordinary success and uh, I'm talking of course about uh, our Sridhar who's uh, carved a niche for himself uh, with his ability to provide all the sites that he's worked with with some great fielding drills and also motivation for the sites to excel on the field. It's my pleasure to present to you our Sridhar Roma fielding coach of Team India. Shri, nice to have you on the show. Thanks for agreeing so readily. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, WV. Thank you very much for having me on the show. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here too. And uh, to kick off things, uh, let me ask you with a very difficult question. Normally, the role of a fielding coach is not the most glamorous of things. That being the case, how did he even you know, go down that route? Uh, to be honest, I was uh, I mean, I'm not aware of it at all. I was actually being uh, doing the head coach or the regular coach with the Hyderabad uh, junior state teams and senior state teams. And then I, I, I after I finished my uh, coaching accreditations, uh, Dav Watmore called me one day back in 2008 and asked me to uh, be a part of the India Under-19 camp and the India A camp, which is going to be conducted by NCA that, that year. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm available. And when I went there, I think the senior coaches there, which are the Dav and many other coaches, uh, they said, since you are since you are young and, you know, would you be able to take care of fielding during this camp? Because at that time, um, you know, there was a new structure uh, at the National Cricket Academy way back in 2008, I'm talking about, as compared to the earlier years. Um, when Dav Watmore had taken over as the director of uh, coaching, so the programs were a little different and they needed a dedicated fielding coach who could give fielding to different age groups uh, about four to five sessions a day. So they said, would you be able, you'd be able to do it because you're young and you look fit and uh, would you be interested? And uh, I, I kind of uh, jumped on to it. And uh, since then, uh, that kind of uh, stuck to me and uh, here we are now. Something like what it used to be in those days, uh, the newcomer would be always be at short leg. Anyway, how were the yeah, early right. days? As a field, how was how were the early days as a fielder, a fielding coach rather? I think my early days. I was at the National Cricket Academy for the first two years, right, 2009 and 2010. So that that really helped me working with different age groups, uh, uh, with uh, different skill sets. I knew when they are at the academy, you had an opportunity to work on the skill set. So I had to do a lot of reading. I had to infer from a lot of other sports, infer and speak to a lot of experienced people as to how when they, when they were good fielders, how they went about it, knowing about the mindset of a good fielder, knowing about the technique of a good fielder. I had an opportunity to interact with uh, many coaches who visited uh, the National Cricket Academy at that time. Many fielding coaches. We had someone like Gary Kirsten coming regularly, Trevor Penny, uh, Mike Young, who was someone who did a dedicated uh, uh, stint at the NCA. So working with him for a week really helped as well. So working with many of these coaches who had better exposure than me at that time helped me. And uh, we picked it up from there. And from there on, it was a matter of uh, implementing the learnings and uh, getting, getting the boys into the right mindset. To convince the administrators of the concept of a fielding coach would have taken time. But how infuriating or how frustrating was it until that happened? Actually, I, I, I didn't expect anything. I remember very well... Uh, way back in 2010-11, after almost a couple of years at the NCA, uh, Mr. Sandeep Patil was the chairman, uh, the director of NCA at that time. Actually, without even me knowing it, he's the one who called uh, uh, Kasi sir at that time and uh, and, in, and said that uh, you must have a fielding coach for the India Under-19 team. And uh, I was not even aware of it at that time. And uh, he said, Shriyam, and uh, we have asked Sridhar who's working at the NCA and he should be part of uh, the fielding, uh, part, part of the coaching staff as a fielding coach for the India under-19 team. And uh, apparently, Kasi sir uh, spoke to President sir and, uh, he, and and it finally happened. And 
uh, that came as a surprise to me uh, and uh, that is when it started so i don't know now every every team travels with the fielding coach because it is seen as such a specialized skill like you said early on probably there was a bit of a challenge to convince the administrators but when when people who believe in you and when the top guy, uh, people like uh, ravi or uh, uh, sandeep patel who been around seen things if they if they understand the meaning of the value of having a dedicated fielding coach in a team i think it's easier to uh, speak to administrators your tenure at the nca would you say that was the start of the rise and rise of shrida i don't know about the rise and rise but it was the changing point in my career because it uh, it freed me up it, it gave me better exposure it allowed me to work under some fabulous coaches whether it was uh, b arun or whether it was uh, uh, da watmore i had an opportunity to do a uh, lot of work uh, for 2011 world cup when indian team was practicing there and that gary kirsten sandeep sandeep sandeepai was there sandeepai was there for, for three years so it was wonderful uh, you know working uh, and learning from uh, sandeep patel at that time so uh, it really helped me work with a lot of other coaches across india across the length and breadth of india traveling to various academies setting up uh, academies for various uh, state uh, associations and also uh, you know traveling the length and breadth of country doing uh, coach education programs for bcci that really helped me because when you start teaching you start learning as well so you you got to learn more when you teach and so that really helped as well and uh, yeah i think my the time i spent at nca was was probably the the best thing to happen to me it laid the foundation uh for the for the things i had dev watmo was highly impressed by you i know it for a fact for the simple reason i had uh, quite a few journalists calling me and asking me are you aware of a fielding coach called shridhar because he's highly recommended by dev watmo uh, what is it that, that uh, impressed uh, dev watmo that you did actually uh, to be honest i didn't do anything to impress him i just uh, was trying to carry out uh what he wanted uh, during his tenure at nca and uh, he is someone who really really supported his way of going about things were very simple once he entrusted you with the job he never interfered and uh, he completely believed in you like all most of the good leaders do they believe in you and once they pick you they believe in uh, what you can deliver and dev gave me all the freedom dev was uh, extremely um, comfortable to work with he gave all the coaches who worked around him a lot of freedom and uh, he set up a fabulous environment for coaches and athletes to thrive so uh, and that's it that's it. i just went on went about doing my business went about getting better learning uh, filing in the reports making those presentations and uh, ensuring that the, the the athletes or the cricketers who come to the national cricket academy enjoy enjoy the stint uh, as a fielder there whenever they come for fielding it should be it should be they should be looking forward to it, it should be fun for them it should not be something they are ba i have to, do i have to go for fielding now so we brought about a change in the way we conducted the drills and uh, you know we wanted to be more enjoyable more fun more competitive probably that is something which uh, which really helped yeah talking about making it interesting and fun a fielding coach needs to be imaginative but yet there needs to be a lot of practicality in it isn't it absolutely absolutely you hit the nail on the head when you say this because especially when you are working with the same team over a period of 4 uh, to 5 years or when you're working in the same uh, academy uh, that is where the, the 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 innovation comes that's where your creativity comes into mind and that is where otherwise kids will be uh, really really bored doing the same thing every day time and again so uh, as a coach we have to be creative we have to be innovative and uh, that's when i joined a lot of uh, baseball uh, online uh, clubs online where i could you know get access to a lot of baseball uh, coaching methods a lot of baseball drills a lot of baseball catching drills had interaction with a lot of baseball coaches uh, that time when i was part of that club so that helped me into bringing a lot of innovative drills and uh, it helped me work uh, work on the importance of footwork in uh, in fielding you know footwork is something which is uh, neglected generally people talk only about hands how good hand should be how you should catch how you should look at the ball but no one speaks about how important good footwork is to take a good catch or uh, to be a good fielder or even to throw well so uh, being 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 part of the baseball learning culture really helped me do that and uh, also i got a lot of drills uh, through through those uh, various groups which i was a member of which i could uh, cricketize you know obviously they were baseball drills but i could cricketize them and 
make it relevant to our sport, especially with throwing and catching. So that really helped me in those uh, six years I was uh, I was with the NCA and of course talking to a lot of senior coaches, talking to a lot of players as to what they want. And the best way to go about is is uh, seeing what the players are doing in the match and uh, setting up things for them which would help them improve as well. Did you glean anything else from any other sport besides baseball? Ah, uh, good one. Uh, so a few reaction drills, hand-eye coordination drills, which uh, Formula One drivers uh, do before they take on a race. You know, that's a sport where uh, every hundred or thousandth of a second counts. And what they do before they enter a race to de- to, to develop their uh, hand-eye coordination, they also do those simple uh, uh, colored balls and uh, you know those kind of drills before they go. And it's surprising. And uh, then we are trying to inculcate that into uh, some of the uh, camps which we did at the National in- uh, National Cricket Academy, and also uh, a little bit uh, uh, from uh, soccer as well. You know how they went about their preparations and how they how they developed their agility. You know we picked up a lot from that, and uh, I used to read books on badminton and tennis as well. How they improved their agility and how they maintained a good uh, balance in you know in order to uh, move better. So a lot of things, uh, small, small things picking up from other sports, how they train, how, how they did. And cricketizing it, like I said earlier, uh, really uh, helped me to be a little bit innovative and a step ahead uh, of the rest. Your first impressions of the Indian dressing room and the reception that you got. Talk us through them. Well, it was very. I was very nervous, to be very honest. I was very nervous when I landed there. And uh, when, I, when I went in first... Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't know what to do, but I think uh, MS and Ravi made me feel very, very comfortable. Luckily, I had uh, known MS before that because I was uh, helping the Indian team camp during the 2011 preparations while they were practicing in NCA for three weeks. So I had done a lot of work quietly, and uh, and MS remembered that, and uh, he made me feel very uncomfortable. And he was also aware that we had won the Under-19 World Cup in 2012. So he made me very, very comfortable. Just said, keep doing what you're doing with the under-19 boys. Nothing changes. And uh, Ravi also made me feel very, very comfortable, very, very clear. And having worked at the NCA, I knew a few of the boys from before because they had, uh, you know, come to NCA every now and then for their camps or uh, rehab programs. So I had a small connect with them. And uh, that also helped. But to be very honest, I was nervous. It's critical to understand the cricketing culture as well when you travel abroad. How good was Team India in that respect? Uh, it had a great culture. I mean, uh, Duncan Fletcher was the coach at that time when uh, I joined under Ravi Shastri. Uh, Ravi Shastri was the director of uh, cricket. Duncan Fletcher was the head coach. And uh, I think uh, uh, the team had a great culture. It was fabulous. It had a great captain, the greatest ever. And uh, the culture was very good. It's just that they were not in uh, good form, having lost the Test Series uh, 3-1, I guess. They were a little, little uh, low on confidence. And all they needed was probably a change of energy at that time. But the culture was excellent. All the boys, each one of them was extremely hardworking. And all of them were very welcoming as well when we when we joined the team. And uh, it was easy to just to go, go and do, do about your work because the captain was very clear with what he wanted. And... Uh, yeah, that it just it was seamless. I would say, although I was very nervous, I think they made us feel very comfortable when we went in because the culture was extremely good. It is generally believed and said, even repeatedly across generations, that fielding is one aspect that can be improved at any time. You find this to be true? Absolutely true, hundred percent. Fielding and fitness are two components which are totally controllables because the harder you you work, uh, the the better you get in that. Unlike batting and bowling, where there are a lot of uncontrollables, like in batting, there is there is a pitch, there is a condition. You have to bat, get an opportunity at the right time. The decisions have to go in your favor. A lot of things are there which you cannot control. Similarly, in bowling as well. But in fielding, like in uh, physical fitness, you do it. You you know when the ball is coming to you, you have to, coming to you. You have to do a certain thing. So uh, the more you work on it, the better you get at it. Definitely, there is no question about it. It's a total controllable. And that is why you see uh, teams uh, working hard on fielding nowadays. And uh, the results are there for for everyone to see. The standards of fielding across the globe has gone up uh, leaps and bounds. 
current day cricketers are definitely fitter and they also work very diligently but yet you see a lot of instances of injuries is there any particular reason for it i think one of the reasons for injuries so frequent nowadays is the quantity of cricket i mean one of the reasons is the quantity the amount of cricket we play and 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 the 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 intensity with which uh, it is played so in my opinion uh, the standard of cricket across generations has always been the same relevant to the era but i think because of the uh, various tournaments various uh, uh, aspects coming in the commercial aspects coming into the sport uh, the quantity of cricket has uh, gone up way above what it was earlier and two the intensity with which the cricket uh, is played due to the demands of the viewer you know uh, is gone up a lot because today if i am watching a match on tv i want to see a highly intense battle i want to see players giving their best you know and not put a foot wrong uh similarly uh, that is what fans from all countries uh, want their players to do so the intensity at which the sport is played has gone up leaps and bounds and that is one of the reasons uh, why players uh, get injured and burnt out uh, a little earlier than what it was before and uh, also the quantity of cricket has gone up this hardly an off season off season nowadays you see even the ranji trophy as we are talking uh it's the last round of the league stage and there is still the knockout stage to go so it's been going on since almost two and a half months two months so before that the vijay azare before that the mushtaq ali before that we have the preparatory camp so there's hardly any off season so i think uh, the effort the, the that is needed from a player now is extremely high because uh, no one accepts uh, anything less than 100% nowadays so the quantity and the intensity is leading to a bit of uh, injuries i feel uh um, so which which is nature of the beast i guess that is what we are heading to give us an insight on how the all format players ensure they don't get jaded the likes of rohit sharma or virat kohli i think the most important thing uh, common across all those uh, all format players is i think the love for the sport they just love playing cricket and i know it is physically at some point they need to take a break even the greatest of the greats will need a break at some point in time uh, to keep their refreshness like you're saying but i think it is the love for sport which comes to my mind first and uh, it's their ability to adapt from one format to the other seamlessly easily is something which makes them an all all format player because uh, they're able to switch between formats in the gap of 2 days or 3 days so these two uh, these two uh, abilities uh, come to my mind first and also another thing which i feel is my personal opinion is uh, if you see many of them they have very simple basic uh, techniques which helps them adapt to different formats and different uh, conditions easily it is only it's, it's only as a coach i feel it's only when a player is technically challenged he fails to adapt to different formats but somebody who is technically sound who's close to the basics uh, will be able to play in all formats because uh, your technique will allow you to do so so if you see all the top uh, gun all format players they'll be they'll be technically quite uh, quite sound which helps them adapt whether it is a bowler or a batter they which helps them adapt uh, to different uh, formats there there could be an odd exception to the thumb rule but largely their ability to adapt to different conditions they're uh, having a love for the sport and having a technique that is uh, easy to uh, it's easy on the eye and it's close to the basics helps them adapt to all formats talking of different formats and the nuances there's a general view that catching especially close in catching the standards are dropped do you agree uh the number says so the number says so so uh, yeah, there is there is a there is a point to be discussed there uh, it's a good question it's a very very good question as you see uh, test match cricket uh, dropping the number of matches each country is playing in the next wtc cycle obviously india england and uh, australia obviously are playing a lot of test matches because there's a lot of demand because of the quality of cricket which these three countries offer but other countries obviously are playing lesser and lesser test match uh, as opposed to the earlier cycle so you 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 bound to see that also i think it's probably the amount of training uh, uh, cricketers put into their uh, slip catching or close in catching uh, uh, i mean skills you know nowadays everyone they put a lot of time into their agility or uh, you know feeling at the deep and pulling off miraculous catches at the boundary lines and stuff like that 
uh, not a lot of athletes put into time developing their hand-eye coordination and you know reaction skills. Uh, so they only do it when they're in the red ball format. So uh, and they spend most of the year, uh, if not large part of the year, uh, in the white ball format. So probably the practice time also has, has gone down a bit. But uh, yeah, you see that, and uh, it's a bit of a shame because uh, I love watching red ball cricket. I love watching. Three slips and a galley and a short, short leg when a bowler is coming into bowl. So, yeah, it's a bit of shame. But I think it's also cyclic. Maybe the, cyc the, the wheel will spin and we will see things getting better. Sri, so now moving on to something which is close to your heart. Hyderabad cricket. What is going on there? <laughs> Uh, I've been away from Hyderabad cricket for almost 13 years uh, since I joined NCA in 2008. After I, I came back in 2021, and uh, we have our own uh, cricket academy there. We, uh, uh, in Hyderabad, me, Ravi and Arun got together to open a cricket academy. And the first centre we opened in Hyderabad in collaboration with St. John's Sports Coaching Foundation. And I've been coaching at the grassroots level for the last uh, one year and uh, really enjoying it, getting a hang of Hyderabad cricket, which is not at the best of the health at the moment. And um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame that we are languishing at the bottom of the table uh, in Ranji Trophy and not able to uh, qualify in uh, any of the age groups uh, for the knockouts in the tournaments conducted by the BCCI. So obviously something is not right there. I'm just trying to figure out what it is and uh, things are not, not good. But uh, yeah, it's one of my, if I get an opportunity to, you know, to set things right, I'd be happy to contribute and, uh, you know, get Hyderabad. I should say it's past glory because we all remember, we all have been part and during your times and even times before that, uh, one of the oldest uh, cricket playing states in the in the, in the country and uh, with a lot of history, very rich uh, culture and heritage. So, obviously, uh, players, the young current crop, crop of cricketers need to understand uh, and uh, be proud of the city that they represent. Unfortunately, it is not the case, and uh, yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a shame. But uh, hopefully, it'll be up and running soon. I should say. Yeah, hopefully, things will get better, and I'm sure you'll play a major role in that as well. Now, let's move on to the interesting aspect of all this: the leadership. Let's talk about the leadership qualities. Uh, you worked with them. You have seen them operate. Um, where would you and how would you rate? Um, the Virats and the Kohli's and uh, in the sense, Dhoni and of course, Rohit Sharma. I mean, all of them are, all of them come with extremely uh, capable leadership qualities and each one has got his different way of uh, uh, leading, whether it's a team or whether it's a group. So, uh, and uh, that is how it should be. They should, it should never be the same again, but their, their, their motives and intent is to take Indian cricket to the top top of the world. They want Indian cricket to be the best. And uh, and also, they operate uh, with the resources available to them. So, uh, I think uh, each guy has got a different style of leadership. So, uh, in terms of, uh, in the, the, like I always said, and uh, I always mentioned, uh, uh, captaining in each era is going to be difficult. Nowadays, eras are gone after every five years. You see a huge shift in the number of players in the team. And captaining the younger generation now is uh, way different from what you would do to captain a younger generation in the early 2000s or even in the 90s because the young generation is totally different now, the millennials. So each each time you need a different uh, leadership skill to bring in and uh, same like coaching, isn't it? Like how no two coaches are the same. Similarly, no two uh, captains are the same and uh, we, we all know what the great MS uh, Dhoni has done to Indian cricket. And, and I mean, he's is par excellence. I mean, enough books and enough uh, TV series and enough uh, documentaries are made about his leadership qualities. We all know uh, what he is all about. He's unbelievable. He's something which, uh, no matter how much we talk about, is uh, is enough because he's such a fabulous uh, leader. Without without uh, even without even uh, wanting to do so, he leads by example, isn't it? Everything he does is a lesson in leadership. So. And uh, he's probably set up the template for uh, quality leadership, not just in sports, but across various uh, 
uh, various businesses as well, you know, various, uh, whether you call it uh, entrepreneurship, whether you call it sport, you call it business, he's just uh, a cut above. He's just, he's just what he is, Ms. Dhoni. So he's the greatest I've seen. So, yeah, it's been, we have different leaders and all of them have taken India to the top. There's no doubt about it. And the future, we'll get more leaders who'll come and take India to the top as well. The motive of each one is the same. Like I said, they all want India to be on the top, and which is fabulous to see. Now on to the coaches you worked with, their leadership styles and qualities. Um, give us a brief view about that. Uh, Ravi, Arun, Watmore, Sandy, all of them. Yeah, uh, it's a good question. It's a very good question. Uh, again, like like the captains, even the coaches were different. Uh, like I said, Dad was some, uh, someone who was very democratic, gave everyone a lot of freedom to work with. Uh, I mean, uh, Duncan Fletcher was someone who was extremely good in observation, very keen. I, uh, very keen watcher of the game, great uh, thinking, great ideas. Sandy Bai was again someone extremely good in talent picking. He, he could see a player and tell you uh, that he was good. That's why he was extremely good as a selector as well. And uh, and at the NCA also, he brought in. He he, he never uh, enforced himself upon anybody. He allowed uh, things to, you know, he allowed coaches to flourish under him. And uh, Ravi, by needless to say, I mean everyone knows about him. Uh, he's a he's a command man manager and motivator par excellence. He brought the best out of everyone around him. And uh, no matter how how he had to, he knew what worked, what ticked each player. He knew when to speak, how to speak, and what to speak at what time. He had that in him, and he had a great personality, a great person, a great presence. Uh, so, that was Ravi Bhai. And uh, Arun, Arun went about his way. Arun, extremely patient, always giving, willing to give a uh, listening ear to everyone, giving them options, empowering the players. Uh, that was his style of uh, functioning, which has also worked very well especially with the bowling units uh, doing so well and improving so well. Even now you see uh, the bowling unit has been doing extremely well in this ODI series against New Zealand. So each one had his own way of leadership, but end goal again is to bring the best out of the person or the people who are uh, in front of you, the best out of the people who are beside you and the best out of the people who are behind you. That is the essence of leadership. And if we, and if we can do that, that means you've been successful at leadership and all the names we spoke about uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, I've done that with a group of people. Uh, uh, they have worked at least while I was there. There are school, two schools of thoughts here. Some feel that good fielding sessions serve a dual purpose, improve fitness as well as skills. Mm. And the other school which says fitness improves skills. Mm. Which side are you leaning? Oh, it's a good question again. Uh, see, cricket is a Skill sport, you know, skills are very important. I, I still believe, although it is moving towards power, it is moving towards becoming a power sport, but uh, I think you need the skills uh, to perform well. Uh, there, you know, in fielding, I understand if you are, if you are, if you are, if you, if you, if you are fit and if you are agile and if you are fast, you can reach the ball faster than probably another, another fielder. So that gives you an advantage. It's a bit like tennis. Isn't it? You got to be fit to get to the ball in tennis, and then your skills have to come into uh, play. In fielding, you have to be fit to get to the ball, and then your skills, your soft hands or your throwing technique comes into play. But in batting and bowling, it's it's your it's your mind and it's a reaction, isn't it? Of course, you need to be agile and fit. But for a fast bowler, you need to be fit to run in and you know uh, bowl that at, at at a speed of 80, 90 miles an hour. Uh, batting, I think it's it's more of a reaction sport. You, you need your skills. Of course, you need your fitness for your running bit because you need your endurance to bat for long hours. You need your concentration. Uh, and from fitness, you, you if you're fit, you're able to concentrate better for longer durations. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mix and match. I think uh, we are coming to a stage where uh, fitness is very, very important to, 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 to survive in the sport or to excel in the sport, I should say. Because uh, like we discussed earlier, the intensity with which the game is being played now has really, really gone up. The, the, the technique doesn't change much. Of course, there's a lot of hitting, there's a lot of sixes. Because the batters are fitter, because, uh, I mean, the, 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 the products, the bats are better, and uh, because the practices is better, 
cricket is getting better because the coaching is better. Uh, coaches are more hands-on now. They're willing to do a lot of hard work. So, because the facilities are better, the game has improved so much, um, I would say. So, uh, yeah, fitness and, uh, and and skills now go hand in hand and uh, it, eventually there will be a day when uh, fitness will be all important, I guess. We are moving in that direction. I'm sure you agree with me as well. I'm not implying anything at all with my next question because uh, we generally tend to believe, us coaches tend to believe that everything has a shelf life. we got to be updating everything all the time. The drills that you structured over a period of time, and during your tenure, are they relevant now or are they going to be redundant very soon? Depends on the context. Depends on the context in which we use the drills. So, uh, certain things are still relevant in the game. Like you, 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 you practice a high ball irrespective of whether which format and at what intensity you're playing and high ball is an high ball. So, uh, I think the drills... Uh, Depends on the uh, on the context with which we are going to use them, uh, and uh, whether you're using it to develop a skill, whether you're using it to develop into your fitness, or whether you're using it to develop team spirit. It depends uh, why and when we use a fielding drill, and uh, depends on the context with which you are using it, whether they are relevant uh, over a, over a period of time or, or not. Uh, at the grassroots level, I think when you are when you're teaching the basics to young young kids of 16 years old or 17 years old, I think. Uh, the basics uh, still hold good. They, they are very, very important in inculcating the right things to do repeatedly. Uh, but uh, at the international level, the demands are changing as you're, as you're implying. The demands are changing uh, 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 what is needed from an athlete or from a fielder. So we'll have to tweak those uh, drills a bit. So on the, depending on the context, we'll have to work with it. It's not only the demands, it's also the uh, temptation of going in for newer methods from different sports than you chose. For example, you chose a bit of baseball, you chose a bit of tennis, you chose various other sports. There might be some who choose different sports. Absolutely. So that is what my intent of asking that question. There is, there is, there is no right or wrong way to do it. Each one, each one to his own. There, 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 there should be more methods than, than one uh, to, 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 skin a, to skin a cat, like I would say. Like, so each, he, he, each coach will have his own styles. Uh, will have will have his own way of learning. Will have his own way of delivering. As long as obviously the motive is the same, the intent is the same to get that unit to be the best it can be. So uh, there is and always it is good. It doesn't even need to be from a sport. Also, it can be from any other thing. So you know you can learn from so many other artists. You can learn from arts. You can learn from literature people. There's so much you can learn as a coach. So uh, yeah, I mean. There is no, there's no end to it. It can always be different, and it can always, it'll always only go forward and uh, further up. If you had to reflect on what you did during your tenure, what would you do better? Oh, I don't know. There are many things I, I would, uh, I would not change, but there are many things I would probably do better. What would you do? That's a, it's a tough question to answer. I need some more time to think about it. <laughs> okay. As we talk, you, you can keep thinking as we talk. Yeah, now, yeah. I hear the book that you wrote, Coaching Beyond, is making you laugh all the way to the bank. How true is that? Firstly, <laughs> firstly, uh, yeah, let me tell, thank you for asking about it. And uh, since you're talking about bank, uh, every single pie from that book is going for charity. Every single pie that is made from that book is going uh, to a couple of uh, charitable foundations. One is to develop underprivileged uh, children who are good at who are good at cricket, young cricketers who cannot afford it. And the other uh, the other part of it is going to the Shirdi Sai Baba Trust. So that that kind of settles the issue of me laughing all the way to the bank. Uh, I don't know about the publishers though. From my side, I can say this is, uh, and I'm saying it in a public forum, and you're the first person I'm telling it to. I've told it to my mother and wife and I'm telling it to you. So that settles the issue in terms of laughing all the way to the bank. It's a good job that I asked you that question. So now people are very much aware of what exactly is happening. And you also made me proud with your Thank answer. You. Thank we, you very much. The now intention finally, of the book was not to make uh, money at all. The intention of the book just to bring out uh, what I saw from my eyes 
in the people who were instrumental in the making indian cricket team the number one for five years um, and the methods that were implemented to bring it out to people to show the kohli shastri era why indian team was so fearless and uh, they played fearless cricket and uh, they they went abroad and of course they lost test matches we lost test matches but we also played a certain brand of cricket which was uh, which was uh, quite attractive i would guess in that in that time and uh, what they did well and uh, what what went into making it such a fearless uh, fear uh, feared cricket team in that era and how why they were number one for six years until they lost that finals of the world test championship so that is that was the idea to bring about the best about the kohli shastri era that that was the idea as i'm sure that book uh, would be a, a bank of knowledge unleash a word or two of advice to the aspiring uh, fielding coaches from your bank of knowledge i think uh, should be relentless in what we do lot of hard work lot of hard work um, and uh, you should be enthusiastic about somebody else's success that is the key i always say to be not just a fielding coach uh, any young coach uh, the two most important thing a young coach should understand is you are not there for your future you are there to help someone else get a better future and you should be enthusiastic about that and that enthusiasm is is what will take you to the next step and you should be genuinely interested in in the development of the person um, uh, in front in front of you and uh, that should be the key 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 to me for the, for any to key message from me for any aspiring young coach that uh, it is it is enthusiasm which will take you forward it's, it's a genuine interest and genuine effort to help someone else develop and uh, grow in their career is what a coach is all about and if you do that with enthusiasm if you sh- if, if you show that and surely a uh, young coach can become successful because when you're genuinely interested in developing uh, another person you 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 read a lot you do a lot of research you understand that person you connect with that person and then when you have to do it to a group of people when you're in a team environment or an academy environment it really really is a most satisfying job you can ever find but it has to be selfless no true words have been spoken thanks a lot shri i know you are in the midst of a campaign in the dp world ilt20 tournament all the very best for the uh, future games thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much sir it was a pleasure being uh, being on the show with you and uh, i keep uh, i i keep uh, nitpicking your head when we are in the com box together doing tamil commentary but it was wonderful uh, speaking to you I, i always enjoy listening to you in the com box as well so uh, yeah looking forward to seeing you soon on the ground uh, day after tomorrow likewise shri take care bye thank you thank you that was shri the ta- taking us through his uh, career and all the experiences uh, of uh, being a part of the indian side i'm sure you would agree that his journey has been an inspirational one it's also a great lesson on how you can spot an opportunity stay the course and then achieve big things in life and as usual i like to sign off by saying until i catch up with you next time take care and be good <laughs>